the better your sales process is, uh, the more effective all that other stuff, all your marketing, all the automation, all that stuff that we've been talking about. So it's very important. We're very involved in that. We got a whole system that we built. But what we're gonna talk about today is what do you do with that client when you actually get in front of the client? Because that's gonna be a huge break point that'll greatly affect your sales if you don't have a process for that as well. And I also think that once you get in front of the client, you, your automation is somewhat, you, you have automation tools that we'll talk about, but your automation is, is, that's kind of your break point. That's where it becomes more personal. And so you need to have a system for the way you handle things personally as well. So what we're gonna talk about today, so it's not what you know, it's what you show. Uh, what this is meant to get you guys thinking about is, okay, so you have all this knowledge, how do you convey that to a client? And the best way to do that is not to talk the whole time, but actually show them. So we want to be able to show a client everything that we're doing. What we're gonna talk about today is we're talking about attitude, appearance, and then we'll go into like the little show and tell session, kind of like we did when you guys were in elementary school. But the reason we're talking about attitude and appearance first is because those are gonna be, those are like the first things you can control and those are gonna be your first message to your clients. So that's the first thing you can show your client in a positive manner. So attitude, so when we're talking about attitude, this is a big thing we talk about in our company is when does attitude start? So if my, I want a good attitude tomorrow, then it starts the night before. So what that forces me to do and forces my guys to do, it forces you to think about kind of your actions the night before. Okay, are you going to bed at a good time? Are you making sure you're prepared for your next day? It also forces you to look at your next day. So you're going uh, into your next day prepared and it's just being prepared, something it's very simple, but just being prepared for your next day has a profound positive effect on your attitude. So one of the things we teach is we teach a, a power list. Uh, this has been one of the biggest things that has changed the success of my company, me personally, and then the guys in my company as well. So when we talk about a power list, what a power list is, is it's the three to five most important things you can do tomorrow or that day uh, that are gonna move you towards your goals. So what this does is it gives your day structure, it gives your day momentum, and it keeps you focused on being successful for the day. So where a lot of people do with this is they get this confused with like a ticky-tack to-do list. This isn't like get new paper supplies for the office. An example of something that goes on your power list would be like, I need to talk to this architect. So maybe he's the biggest player in your space. And so you put that on your power list and it forces you to reach out to him. And that's an example of what would be on your power list. I can't really tell you how important this is until you do it. Two keys on this you need to remember is one, you wanna write it down. The second thing is you wanna cross off your tasks as you're doing them. But what we're just trying to do is we're trying to build structure to our day and help us be prepared, which is gonna increase the positivity of our attitude. Uh, the last piece on here is wake up early and work out. What this does for me and what we try to get our guys to do is it starts your day with a disciplined action. If you're set to get up early, it forces you to start your day with discipline, which follows into other areas of the rest of your day. And to me, it's a very vital thing. So then I have a disciplined attitude, which to me is a lot more positive attitude than an undisciplined attitude, and I'm prepared for the day. Let's just do the simple math, okay? If you wake up one hour earlier than you are right now, you gain 15 days over the course of a year that you currently don't have. You can almost gain like a month of working time over the course of a year if you just get up one hour earlier. So if you look at like everything you got accomplished in the next year, if you had an extra month to do it, Okay, that's gonna give you a breather, it's gonna allow you to be more positive, and it's gonna help you have a better attitude. You wanna control the things that you can control, and the attitude is the first thing you can control. We're starting our day, we're controlling what we can, and we got a positive attitude. The next thing we're gonna we're talk about is appearance. Okay, this is the first impression you're gonna have on your clients. So your first impression of the client, they're looking at you, they're looking at how you're walking, your facial expressions, your body posture, all that kind of stuff. Let's look professional. Next thing, this goes into building a brand with appearance. I think you should put your logo on absolutely everything. Have it on your shirts, have it on your trucks, have it on any piece of material you have, or you put your logo on everything that's associated with your business, especially in a localized market. Over time, you're gonna build brand recognition and it's gonna give you more exposure. I also wanna go kind of one step further, especially, so with Oregon, what we do is Oregon has this kind of distinctive blue colored polos. We've been in business since 2008. We're starting to build some more exposure where people just know us by the polo. Show up on a job site, everybody knows, hey, that blue, that belongs to Oregon Outdoor Lighting. Our installation guys, they have blue t-shirts. Everybody's starting to know us based off of our blue color. And that's something that if you're consistent with it over time, okay, then you build that brand recognition. Everybody knows you. So building that brand through a consistent image. Last thing I like about this, if you look at guys like Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs, they wear pretty much the same thing every day and Zuckerberg goes to the extreme. The reason he does it is because he wants to focus on 
making decisions and thinking about things that only he can make the decisions on and the focus on. So that's why he's always in a t-shirt and flip-flops because it's one less decision he has to make. Our crews, you show up, they got blue shirts, they wear gray Carhartts, and that is what they wear. They wear it year round. If, they, if you don't show up in that uniform, you don't work. So it's one less thing I have to monitor and my crew leads have to monitor. You work for us, you're not in uniform, you don't show up. So it's one thing you, you could take off your plate that as an owner, manager, whatever, you don't have to monitor. Now we're going to go into the real basis of our sales system. So the game we play is if we lost the ability to speak, could you still sell your lighting designs? Could you still sell your projects if you couldn't talk? And the only way you're gonna do that is if you show everything you're doing. Okay, now we can still speak, so it says you show and tell. So you're gonna speak, but you wanna be able to show everything that you're doing. So first thing, very simple is the greeting. So when you greet somebody, you're gonna go, you're gonna smile, you're gonna shake their hand, and you're gonna hand them your business card. This, I think in our technology age, I don't know, five, 10 years, maybe two years, business cards might be dead, they might go away, I don't know. But what we've seen and what this does is it automatically creates some validation. So you're gonna say, hi, I'm Kyle with Oregon Outdoor Lighting, but then you're gonna hand them a card because they're seeing something visually and reading it, it automatically creates validation for you saying who you are, who you're with, and it's proof that you are who you say you are. Even though it's, you can make your card, that could be fake, but there's just something about it when, you're, when you hand it to them, they see it, they read it. There's a visual impact to that and a trust factor that increases with that. And then it also sets the tone for, hey, everything I tell you, I'm gonna show you, and you, you begin with your business card. Next thing is design. Invest in high quality photos. Find somebody who's really good at nighttime photography. You're gonna have to vet, because there's a challenge between a really good photographer and a really good nighttime photographer, huge difference. So try different people. A lot of times photographers will give you like an entry rate just to go shoot a job, so they'll, to build that relationship. So get them to do it at a discounted rate to do one or two projects, see how you like their feel and their style, and then you can find one that way. And the other thing that does too is there's good photographers, but each photographer kind of has their own style, so you need to make sure that their style fits your, your brand and what you're trying to build. So we're gonna invest in high quality photos. We're also gonna invest in a lot of high quality photos because as we're walking through a design, so if I'm sitting here with a client telling them, oh, like your, your fir trees, your birch trees, look, they look nice, we're gonna light them like this. And if I'm just telling them, there's no impact to that. So the more photos I have, the more likely it is that I have a direct example of what I'm gonna do on their property. So invest in high quality photos, invest in a lot of them. Uh, and we're gonna go through a couple photos right after this. And then last thing, I don't know if this needs to be brought up or not, but I'm going to. Use technology, so you're not gonna carry around a book of like 600 photos. Like you get your iPad, your, lap, your laptop, tablets, whatever it is, just, you can scroll through it. The other nice thing about doing it digitally is you have like, we have all of our folders. You know, you got, you got trees, you got paths, you got ponds, you got whatever photos you wanna do, architectural lighting, landscape lighting. And so when you're with a client, you can just click on the tree folder, find that, you know, you can just really organize your photos when you do them digitally. So that's a really important and increases the speed and being able to show them. Uh, last thing before we look at the photos, what we like to do is, is actually do this as we're walking the yard. So we're gonna do this in our presentation when we like present the design to them. But I also like to do it in the initial, in the initial kind of fact finding stage when we're out walking the yard. Okay, what are you guys thinking? They're like, oh, I want this type of lighting. And you're just showing them photos on your iPad as you're going like this. And they're like, yeah, that's exactly what I want and it just builds good momentum, gets you on the same page, and, and helps you build your design to exactly what they want. I am gonna talk about demos. You guys who don't like demos, this is a good way to limit your demos or try to get around them. I don't think you can fully get around them. We'll talk about that later, but if you're not gonna offer demos and you're not gonna invest in high quality photos, then you're just talking to the client. You're not showing them anything. So if you don't like demos, put some more money into high quality photos. We'll look at a couple photos. And these are just examples. So like on this one, this could be an example of, instead of telling a client, like one of the things we look with that comes up for us is I have this water feature and we can light it from the outside or we can light it from underneath the water. Some people don't want to do underwater lighting because it's higher maintenance or they got chemicals or algae or whatever. So in this photo, instead of telling them, I like to do underwater lighting because it looks better, creates more shadows, creates more detail. Now we can't create the movement that underwater lighting does, but this shows obviously, you know, more details on the rocks. So this is a good example of just showing them instead of telling them how we want to light, it just shows them the effect that you can accomplish with underwater lighting. This is also another example of sometimes we get people who 
aren't sure about doing lights like around the water feature because they want to, they think it'll distract from it. But I'd use this photo to say just it enhances the environment if we do some do some accent lights around the water feature. This one, one of the things we like from a design aspect from Garden Light is I really like their optics, I like the control that it gives me. And I think that Garden Light has, compared to a lot of other people, Garden Light is, is advanced in their optics. And what I can show with this photo is if I don't have proper optics, I can't create an even wash of light across the front of the house. If I just tell them that clients don't understand optics, they don't really care, they get a little bit of an even, you know, understand the concept of, of even light distribution, but this photo really shows that. Uh, the other thing that using high quality photos shows is it shows quality, okay? It shows you can handle big projects if it's a big project. It shows you know what you're doing. It shows your design sense. And I don't even have to say that at all. And so some projects we do on smaller projects will still show this photo because it conveys quality. Everybody says we're a good company, we do a good job. Okay, well show me that. And that's what high quality photos will do. Here, go ahead. Last photo, but this is a nice photo to show space. Uh, one thing that we get is, is a wide driveway like this. They, sometimes you get clients who want to put in like overhead lights and they're just, they're just set on that's the only way I'm going to get you know, light on to the driveway itself. But what this we can use with this and we can show them that we can never tell them is that if you, if you light the stuff around the driveway, it creates enough definition that you don't need to have an overhead light because you can, you can define the space uh, with accent lights around the perimeter of the space. And then the other cool thing that this shows is the use of shadows. Shadows are one of those things people understand shadows, but they don't understand shadows. So this photo we can show that your project will still look nice during the winter time because uh, maple trees, I, I like some maple trees better in the winter time because they lose all their leaves. So it's really good trunk structure. So I can show a client that helps us sell a little bit, maybe a, a few more jobs in the winter time because we can get them to do it instead of waiting until spring or summer. So. Next thing we're going to go into is fixtures. Um, kind of three key points that we always try to do, or we always do. Okay, so show the actual fixture. For a lot of people, just physically seeing the fixtures conveys the quality of the fixtures. If all your competition is giving them a catalog or showing them stuff in a catalog and you're showing them actual fixtures, that's a huge difference uh, that you can do for yourself. Then you can do is you can open it up, you can show them the optic. Males like 55 plus for us love to see the optic. They like to look at it, it's a cool thing. It's just one of just small things, you show them the optic. A lot of other manufacturers use a flat optic, so again, it's another selling point for you, but you need to physically show them the optic. The other thing we do, so I know a lot of you guys from Florida, you guys are coastal environment, so I think a lot of you guys kind of levitate towards brass because you're in that, that real salty environment. So maybe you only do brass, but for us, we do a lot of aluminum V3s and we do brass V3s, but regardless of if they want brass or not, we make them feel the brass. Okay, it was talked about, talked about earlier is like can you feel the quality of the fixture and you can feel the quality of an aluminum v3 I mean this is heavier than most lights that, that any of your clients have ever picked up this will stick in their memory the weight of this the quality of this will be what they remember regardless of if they're gonna go with brass or not we try to encourage them to hold to hold the brass but offer it and just hey look I want you to feel this I want you to feel the quality of these fixtures even if they're doing black v2s have them hold the brass because that, that quality and that mental connection to what this felt like will, will stick in their brain. And then last thing, always offer clients good, better, best. You could do like a black V2, you do V3 and then V3 brass. Maybe it's a, you know, maybe it's a mini spot V2 and then a V3. There's different combinations you could do, but for us, this is a pretty good example of V2, V3. Um, and then we do the brass V3. What this does is once we establish what the design is and adjust that, then it gives them the option and it's, it's good, better, best. Most of the time, if they're not uh, sold on the type of fixture they want, you're gonna get your price buyers, they're gonna go with the lowest. You're gonna get your guys who only want the best, they're gonna go with the highest. Generally speaking though, guys, people are gonna go into the middle. We introduced this, one of the, one of the executives at Nike, He's a good friend, and this is one of the things that he, he suggested we do. He encouraged us to kind of open up our offerings and give different selections. So it's important to give them three options so they have a selection. And kind of last point on that is so they don't, some people, regardless of how good you do, regardless of how good your customer service is, when it comes to price, if you only give them one price, they have a tendency to feel like, you know, maybe you're just charging what you want to charge because you think you can get that amount of money. So this just really kind of keeps the conversation open 
gives them options and makes them more receptive to uh, your pricing. The next thing we want to show is we want to show third party validation. We, we talked about this a lot today. It's been talked about a lot. I think everybody understands you need to get reviews online. So they're going to do third party validation probably before you ever show up. So reviews are important. Another area you can look to it is you're going to be looking for organizations you can belong to. Maybe it's the BBB, maybe it's the AOLP, maybe it's uh, your HBA, maybe it's some of the architect um, organizations, your local you know, landscape groups. Uh, the key thing from a standpoint of, of, of doing groups for your clients is I think there's two reasons you join organizations. Is one, so you can go, you can get training, you can grow yourself. The other one for your clients is where you, what we're talking about here is third party validation. And so the key with that is you need to choose organizations that mean something to your clients. So you can join the organization yourself and it gets you training, do that, that's great, but it might not be that effective in using it with your clients. So that's kind of individual markets, you're gonna do, you have to do a little research, you just, it's very easy if you already have clients, you ask them, hey, does this organization mean anything to you? Does the BBB mean anything to you? And if it does, you, you pull 25 clients or 50, 100 clients, whatever, and most of them say it does, okay, then you join it, you put the stamp on there and it, and it helps you with the sales process. If they never heard of them, it's not really gonna help you in your sales process. Try to find organizations that mean something to your clients and that's a little bit different um, per market, but it's just something, some guys join 45 organizations and all their sales stuff has all these prints on it, which maybe volume helps, I don't know. But if those organizations don't mean anything to your clients, then it's not gonna be as effective as you want it to. So provide the information for your clients is our last point. What we do, and we're, we're switching to, to digital, um, but we give our clients, like it's just a simple handout we give them. So when we're on the spot, you just put it on the table, but all it is is it's a snapshot of our rating on Angie's List, our rating on House, our rating on Yelp, our rating on Home Advisor, and then our new one has our rating on Google. So again, we're trying to show our clients everything. We're a five-star company, or we're a you know highly rated company. If I'm sitting there in a sales meeting presentation, if I just show this to them, oh okay, it shows it right there. They can look it up afterwards. They might have already looked it up, but again, it's it's that game of showing them everything we're going to tell them. And so this is just a quick, easy. Hey, I did your research for you. Here you go. We pulled some reviews off of those websites as well. As you work through a sales presentation or a sales process, as much momentum as you can keep, the better. So if they don't have to go do research because I provided something for them that's off of legitimate websites, and that helps me keep the momentum going for the sale so they don't say, hey, you know, let me, let me check you out online, which again, they probably did it before you went there, but you're just giving them added validation. Uh, testimonials is going to be our next topic here. Testimonials are something we have played around with for a long time. Uh, what we did this year is we made the investment into video testimonials. Because again, a written testimonial to me is not really showing the client anything because if I want to give somebody 200 written testimonials, I can go type them up tonight and I can put names and numbers on them and give them to a, to a client tomorrow. So what we did, I'm gonna show you two videos we did. Okay, the first one is from a client, so it's a client interaction, and the second one is gonna be from a landscape architect that we work with. Now he's, he's probably the top, does more yards, gardens in our market um, than anybody else. So what he does is, not only is it him saying it, but it just it associates our name with the quality and his reputation as well. So it's a testimonial, but it's also another way to do third party validation. So we'll watch uh, the first video, which is a client, a direct client testimonial. You know, it's, it's interesting because lighting isn't always thought of. It's amazing to see the reaction from people before lighting. I didn't think about the home. I didn't think about the landscaping. I just pulled into the garage and turned the car off and walked inside the house. And now every time I drive up, it's like, okay, this is cool. It really has enhanced how I feel about the home. And I would say it's been the, the thing that I enjoy almost more than anything else that we invested in in our home. I'd highly recommend Oregon Outdoor Lighting. Every part of this process was a real pleasure to work with. While the house you know, we're very happy with and the landscaping we're very happy with, it is the lighting that our friends and family and visitors uh, always comment on.
So example on that, if I'm going to tell a client, hey, call 40 people on my list here, call these three people versus, hey, let me show you a video. Okay, that's going to have a lot more impact than showing them a piece of paper. So now we're kind of taking show into the next, the next level. I'm a landscape designer here in Portland, and for the past uh, couple decades, I've always used my landscape contractors to do the, the light installation. And that's not a forte of theirs. Most designers are people that don't think about the lighting. I met Kyle out on a, an older project of mine. He showed me some of the pictures of the lighting that had been done on some of the pro, uh, parts of the project, and I was just kind of flabbergasted at how incredible it looked because it, uh, there wasn't any indication that uh, there was any life to this at night, and, and it was just amazing. The quality of light and expertise that comes with Oregon Outdoor Lighting just awed me, and I, I decided that, hey, this is going to be a separate contractor on my projects. They have a lot of freedom to express themselves, and I, I'm always impressed with what they come up with. I've had Kyle come in on, on the lighting on my project, my personal home, and driving up in the evening, it, it, it's, it's incredible to see the vibrancy of the garden now and, and from inside the house, just looking out. They put the icing on the cake for me. There are so many architectural details in, in the gardens I do that to highlight those with nighttime lighting really brings several more hours of enjoyment to the garden that uh, you're not going to see without the lighting. So that one's from industry professional. So again, you can associate your name with, with somebody else's. The last piece on that was, was do your research. So what I mean by do your research is just do it. When you get like a client you're gonna meet with, do a simple, basic Google search. Just do a search and try to figure out who, who they are. You don't have to go into like that detail, but just do a little bit of research because what we can do now, if they're, say, say they're a Nike executive and we have, uh, we're doing some other testimonials, we got a Nike executive who does a testimonial. Then through our, our CRM process, we can go ahead and just send them a video that is a video testimonial before we meet with them that is randomly a person they work with. So if you find, you know, if you can just figure out just at least maybe the industry they're in, you know, is it healthcare, are they doctor, dentist, just try to find some kind of connection. So then you can, you can kind of shift your testimonial, either videos or just the, the list of clients you have and put people that they may be associated with at the top. So when you're doing uh, testimonials and just giving them references, make sure you do, just do a little bit of research, it takes five minutes, it can be pretty impactful.